Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to CAA Travel Talks. Tonight, we're going to one of my absolute favorite destinations in the world. We're going to Africa. So CAA Travel, we've been booking travel since 1961. We're doing worldwide traveling, whether you're touring or cruising, uh, we will have some exclusive member benefits, which we will chat about tonight. So African travel is actually part of our CA Vacations program. And the CA Vacations program offers our members amenities and benefits that you're not gonna find anywhere else. Also some additional perks of 24 seven member care, best price guarantee. And the perks really vary depending if you're doing a cruise, it could be a shipboard credit. If you're uh, sometimes a pre or post night or additional features from our tour partners as well. But again, these are very exclusive to CAA. Right now, the most important thing, first of all, when you're planning is check your passport, make sure it's valid. If you do need to renew it, and often a lot of destinations do require it to be valid for six months, so check with your travel counselor on that, but we can help you with the travel photos. So go on into any of the CA offices, and if you're a premier or a plus member, you're going to get those photos done for free. And if you are an everyday or classic, they're only $8.50. You can use CA dollars that you would earn with some of our CA reward partners, and you can actually apply those to your travel trip. Service fees, you're going to get a, a price break there too as, uh, as being a member. If you're needing an international driving permit, we do offer those in our stores as well. And what we learned the last few years, the most important thing you're going to pack is your travel insurance. You know, through the cancellations and delays and lost baggage, in addition to the very, very important travel medical insurance, we've got you covered. And as a member, you're going to save up to 20%. If you need some new luggage or travel accessories, go on into the stores and you could be saving up to 20% there too. And new for us this year, you're going to save three cents a liter off Shell gas. How incredible is that? So it's now my honor and privilege to introduce Kevin Cowie. We've been working with African Travel for many years. Uh, they're a very trusted um, brand with not only our travel team, but our members. And we absolutely love working with you. Thanks so much for being here tonight, Kevin. Karen, it's an absolute pleasure. And I always am so thrilled to have this opportunity to bring what truly really is only a taste of Africa. Um, because as you know, and perhaps some of your uh, your members know, uh, you know, I always say we could be here until cornflakes time tomorrow talking about Africa. There is so much to talk about this life changing and amazing destination. Um, but tonight, so we'll take a little peek at uh, a couple of places. We are going to take a look at South Africa and but Botswana. And then we're going to take a very, very quick glimpse at something very special that we are offering in 2024. Um, so uh, it will, will, as I say, be a taste of, Af of Southern Africa with a little twist thrown in about halfway through um, that I hope will keep you on tenterhooks for because it is truly something very special. Um, but at African Travel, of course, we are in very, very, very uh, proud and privileged to partner with CAA. Um, CAA truly is an amazing uh, organization, uh, as, and as Karen said, not only for travel, um, but for insurance and all the other things that they bring to you. They really provide a, 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 a rounding out of so many services and offers uh, that you can get all in one place. And at African Travel, we're really thrilled and proud uh, to work with CAA and bring the very best of Africa uh, to you guys uh, through them uh, because their advisors truly are fantastic. They're really au fait with all that is happening throughout the world. Um, and they truly are there to make your uh, planning of any any travel that you want to do anywhere in the world as easy and as smooth and as seamless and as stress-free as possible. That's what they're there for. And we work in partnership with them as the African expert uh, to really uh, create these very, very, uh, really wonderful and exciting uh, opportunities uh, in this really amazing, amazing part of the world. What I wanted to do tonight is to start us off with just a little glimpse of uh, a day on safari in Africa. Uh, so before we get into some of the other uh, detailed stuff and so on, let's sit back, let's take a couple of minutes and see what a day on safari can look like.
really is simply a life-changing experience. It's a trip that is going to be absolutely filled with wow moments. We can't always guarantee what your wow moments are going to be. So much of this is related to nature, um, but we can guarantee there certainly will be wow moments. And at African Travel, one of the things that we are totally committed to and are an industry leader in is our Make Travel Matter and our sustainability efforts and giving back to the continent of Africa, the conservation of wildlife, and indeed to the communities and the peoples of Africa. This little guy here is our poster child uh, this year, and uh, I'm sure you will believe and, and recognize that he is, of course, the absolute epitome of adorability and cuteness, but he means so much more. What he really represents is the future of Africa, that as he grows up into becoming an adolescent and indeed an adult and has a family of his own, that this, the forests and the jungles of Africa will be there for them uh, to live in, to swing in, to play in, um, at the habitat that they are entitled and were born and should be born into. Uh, so uh, making travel matter is a part of every single thing that we do and every program and itinerary that we create in Africa is going to speak to make travel matter in some way. And at African Travel, because of our, you know, as I said, our very proud and privileged partnership with CAA, it means that we can bring you the very best of Africa because, quite frankly, and bottom line is, we know Africa. We are North America's largest tour operator that focuses exclusively on Africa. And we're here to bring you a choice of experiences. You know, we don't want to just give you a plain and simple, here it is, take it or leave it. We really like to give you that opportunity opportunity um, to experience Africa uh, the way you want to do it. They have several different styles of travel, and we'll talk about that a little bit in a second. But it is all about having choice in the way that you experience this incredible destination. And of course, it's very interesting to say, well, why should you go on safari? What is it that really brings Africa to life? Um, certainly discoveries with uh, these uh, the amazing continent and uh, game viewing, the wildlife. I think these are things that are pretty much are obvious to anybody thinking about Africa. But something that so many people don't think about off the top of their head is the cultures of Africa. Every country in Africa has its own culture, and many of them have multiple cultures. And it's just so fascinating to meet these people, talk to them, find out how they live, and they're every bit as interested in you as you are in them. Uh, it's also home to some uh, of the most amazing spots on our planet, including Victoria Falls, which is one of the seven natural wonders of the world. And there is something very, very special happens to you when you go to Africa. People think I'm a little bit crazy when I talk about this, but until you've been to Africa, it's impossible to know and understand but once you've been there, you absolutely will get it. And you'll go, now I know what this guy was talking about. We have a saying that says, you know, you can leave Africa, but Africa will never leave you. It's as though your soul communes with the earth. It really is a very, very special destination and is unlike any other uh, destination in the world. And we've already talked a bit about the sustainability, but the bottom line about Africa is there is something for everyone in Africa. It matters not how old you are, how mobile you are, we can make this happen for you and give you this truly, truly life-changing experience. Because it is very, very important to us to look at different styles. No two people travel in the same way. And so therefore, we want to bring in the planning process, we're going to look at how, you know, how exactly do you want to travel, and then we can bring the itinerary and the style of travel to you that best suits you. This is definitely a big investment of your time, certainly an investment of your money, and therefore it should be done exactly the way that you want to do it. 
Now, we are a luxury tour operator. So no matter which style of travel you choose, you are going to be traveling in the lap of luxury and you will want for nothing. Again, this contributes to that life-changing experience. But if you do want to travel as part of a small group, we have that. Or if you have your own group that you want to bring to CAA and, and put it together, a group of friends or something like that, we can customize something very specially for you. If you're looking to travel on a honeymoon or perhaps a 50th wedding anniversary or some celebratory, for example, um, a, a 60th birthday, a 45th birthday, whatever it might be, we can do that as well. And, you know, Africa really lends itself to families traveling together, whether it be a simple family unit or indeed an extended family and a multi-generational group of people. Uh, Africa really is wonderful for families and our LGBTQ plus community. We speak to them with our pride safari programs because Africa, many, many parts of Africa are very progressive and they really offer very a safe experience uh, for that community to travel to. So the bottom line is we're looking for you to be able to go on safari your way. Each of you is an individual and we want to be able to speak to that and ensure that you get to travel the way you want to travel. So let's now take a little look at a couple of destinations. Unfortunately, Africa is a huge continent and we can fit North America into Africa three times over. So it's impossible for me in the short time that we have this evening to really be able to get into a, a great detail about a lot of different places. So I've chosen three destinations within Africa that we can take a look at. And the first of these is South Africa. So South Africa is what I consider to be Africa 101. It's really perfect for any first time visitors to Africa. Everybody that you're going to meet is going to speak English, hot and cold running water everywhere, flushing toilets everywhere, food that is off the charts amazing. People are just astounded, even when you're in the middle of the, of the bush in the, on safari, the quality of food, the gourmet level that is being served to you is really amazing. But you're also going to see a lot of brands that you recognize so it won't be kind of very exotic off the off the, 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 the charts kind of stuff uh, you will be very comfortable you will eat very very well indeed and no visit to South Africa would be complete without a stop in Cape Town so that's what we're seeing on the screen right now and Cape Town is the mother city of South Africa it's one of the top cities in the world by the way to uh, to visit um, and it is one of the most beautiful cities in the world. It's surrounded on three sides by water, and the iconic Table Mountain forms the backdrop to the city. And Table Mountain is, in fact, the number one requested uh, tour uh, option to do while you are in Cape Town. Um, so you will ascend and descend the mountain by this cable car system. And it's really kind of cool because as you do so, the cable car, the cars themselves actually very slowly rotate. So it will rotate several times on the ascent and descent. Um, and it means that everybody in the car has really ample opportunity to get great images and photographs um, out over the ocean, down towards the city, and indeed back towards the mountain itself. And once you get to the top of the mountain, we are talking billion dollar views. It is simply, simply magnificent. Second most popular uh, place to visit in the Cape Town area is a Cape Point or Cape Peninsula. Now, this is a very important part of the uh, planet geographically. It is where the Indian and Atlantic Oceans come together, but it's also the southernmost point of the continent of Africa. It's very blustery, it's very rugged, it's very beautiful, and it's really a great place to spend uh, the best part of half a day or two thirds of a day or so. And then just about 20 miles along the coast from Cape Point, we have Boulders Beach. And at Boulders Beach, we have a year round colony of penguins. Um, so you don't have to go all the way to Antarctica. We've got them right here for you in South Africa. Um, and as I always love to say, who doesn't love to see a couple of penguins kissing on the beach? But, you know, it's not only about that. Again, we would love to have that opportunity if you're interested 
to get to know the people, to learn more about their cultures and to visit with the communities. These are Make Travel Matter experiences where every visit that you do will be giving back and whether it's to orphans or uh, to some of the ladies and women's empowerment groups at Utando, there are many different things that we can do just to really give you a different aspect and to open uh, the, the world to you a little bit different. Now, you don't have to do this, of course. Uh, this is, again, it's all about those choices of experiences. But if you're interested in doing it, meeting the local communities, we can certainly make that happen for you. And one of my favorite ways to meet people is in their kitchens. Uh, you know, we all love it when people come around to our homes and uh, we're cooking in the kitchen and everybody always somehow seems to gravitate there. And we tell our stories and we gossip about whatever's happening in our lives at that moment. So now, and South Africa, of course, is no different. And it's really a great way. And, you know, you can really extend this, go to the market with whomever it is that you're going to spend the time with. Um, or you can just simply go to their house, do the cooking. But the bottom line is at the end of it all. Um, you will get to know people uh, just in a, a much more intimate way. Um, and you'll also get to sit around the table and enjoy the fruits of the labor and enjoy the food that we have cooked. Um, and other experiences can really take it to other completely different levels. A heli flip over Cape Town is a remarkable way to get a bird's eye view of the landscapes of this incredible city and of the whole of the Cape Peninsula itself. It's really a great way to do it. And in certain itineraries, we even include this for you. Um, but if it's not included and you want to add it, we can certainly do that for you. Um, and then, of course, for those of you who are interested in wine, we have fantastic wines in South Africa. South Africa really now is uh, has some of the best wines in the world, and they're winning prizes with the very, very best of anything in Europe and California and any other places that produce a remarkable and a very high quality wines. Um, but, you know, the winelands are also very, very beautiful. Um, I like to drag up that phrase that you haven't heard for a long time, that it is a Kodak moment at every turn, uh, because it really, really is. It's stunningly beautiful. So even if you're not really into drinking wine, it's still fun to come out here. It's only a, an hour and a half or so from the center of Cape Town to get out to the winelands. So very easy to do for a half day. There are wonderful restaurants out here. Um, that really provide the opportunity to have terrific lunch. And if you're interested in spending a two or three days out here, there are fantastic boutique hotels um, that you can stay in and extend your stay past the city of Cape Town and come out into the winelands. And the art scene in South Africa is fascinating as well. Um, both of the images that we're looking here are actually part of the Franschhoek art route. And Franschhoek is a major player in the wine industry. So on the Franschhoek art route, you'd actually be traveling from Cape Town up to Franschhoek. Um, and on the way, you can stop and see different pieces and works of art. If you're really, depending on the level of interest and how much you're really into art, we can even uh, take you to meet some of the local artists, take you to their studios, spend time with them, learn their techniques. It's really a great, great way to do it and uh, to spend some time. Um, but, you know, the people of South Africa are remarkable. And I hope some of you are familiar with Trevor Noah. He's a very well-known uh, uh, person who now is based here in North America. But he has just recently come up with a little message for us. So why don't we take a listen and see what Trevor wants to share? Hi, I'm Trevor Noah, and I'm South African. And because I'm South African, people from all over the world insist on asking me questions about South Africa. So, I decided to make an ad to answer some of those fascinating questions. Like, how cold and snowy is your Christmas? Well, Tracy, unfortunately, we can't afford snow. Now nah, I'm just playing. We're in the Southern Hemisphere, which means when it's freezing in Connecticut, it's fantastic in Cape Town. Klaus sent me this one. Can you play golf in South Africa? Well, Klaus, we actually have some of the finest golf courses in the world, but judging by your 37 handicap, can you play golf? How many stars are your five-star hotels? Brian wants to know, can I meet the lions? Well, I don't know if you want to meet them, but you can see them on safari. And get this, it's not just lions, Brian. We've got everything. There's elephants, there's rhinos, there's giraffes, there's buffaloes, there's leopards. Come on, man, expand your horizons. 
ostriches. Is South Africa fun? Is it fun? Are you even watching this commercial, Michelle? Paragliding, bungee jumping, surfing, river rafting, shark cage diving, hot air balloons, hiking, cycling, wine tasting, whatever this guy's doing. Does that not look like fun to you, Michelle? Does that not look like fun? So, now that I've shown you South Africa, my only question is, when are you coming to experience it for yourself? So a little bit of fun there in uh, South Africa, and I am just trying to see what has uh, developed here, why I can't move this along. Just bear with me one uh, second and... Uh, South African. Hopefully. Question. Oh, no. We can't afford snow. Now nah, I'm just playing. So I am not quite sure. Okay, bear with me here a second. And as you're as you're doing that, Kevin, I yeah. just have to add, add that was the one of the things that surprised me the most about South Africa was the cuisine, the quality of hotels, the people, and of course the amazing sights. I was totally blown away. Wonderful. I know. And Karen, I'm so glad that you have had the opportunity um, to visit South Africa and uh, and experience what uh, some of what we're seeing today. So, um, yeah, it really is a remarkable, remarkable destination. And thankfully, I have managed to resolve my little technical issue there and we are ready to move along here. And as Trevor said, of course, it's not only I've spent so much time on Cape Town already and some of the fun things to do. You know, you could spend a month in Cape Town and not do everything there is to do but there is so much more to do outside of the city and safari is a big part of what we all want to do uh, when we're in South Africa or in Africa in general. Um, so one of the great things about uh, going on safari in South Africa is you're going to be absolutely amazed. I use the word here quite often, uh, the word is shocked by how up close and personal you're going to get by the animals. But the word shocked is used in the most positive terms possible. Um, I know that everybody's always looking to tick off the big five, which are the lion, the buffalo, the rhino, elephant, and of course the leopard. And the leopard is the most elusive of the big five. Um, there are many, many places in South Africa to go on safari, many private reserves, we choose and prefer to use the private reserves uh, in South Africa because that is going to give you a much more intimate and exclusive experience. Um, but I have one private reserve in particular that is very close to my heart and I happen to think is one of the best places in all of Africa to go on safari is Shamwari. So I'm, I'm going to feature that this evening um, just purely, but it uh, doesn't mean that the other places aren't as good or as remarkable when it comes to going on safari. But Shamwari does have the best rhino protection program in all of Africa. And uh, that is something that's very close to us at African travel is trying to preserve these incredible creatures uh, for the future because they are critically, critically endangered. And therefore, any visit to Shamwari is a make travel matter experience uh, because a part of what you're going to uh, uh, put towards the trip will absolutely go towards protecting the uh, rhinos. Um, they have a full safari experience. I love Shamwari. Every animal, all the animals you can expect, a really great population of leopards here as well, but they take it even further. I've talked about the, the rhino protection, but they also go around the world and they find lions that are being kept in atrocious conditions and they bring them back to Shamwari so that they're able to re uh, live out the rest of their lives in at least somewhat like the conditions that they uh, should have been born into in the first place. This is the Born Free Big Cat Sanctuary uh, program that they have. And um, these lions usually are too old to try and rehabilitate and return to the wild, but they do live, get to live in Shamwari, as I say, in conditions that are much more akin to what they should have been born into. 
And talking of Shamwari, I thought it'd be kind of fun. Um, why don't we go and take one of my very best friends in South Africa is Andrew. He is the head ranger at Shamwari. And uh, he has found something that he just wanted to show us while out on safari. So let's take a look and see what he's got for us. There we go, guys. Beautiful breeding herd just coming out into the open clearing. Matriarch in front and adult females. It's always always amazing to see when elephants are moving uh, from one feeding area to the next or to a watering hole. How the herd has a formation where the females will always have the youngsters on the inside of the herd for protection. The babies will never be far from their mothers. Just gonna it's nice and quiet as they come past. of them have been throwing mud on themselves down at the at the mud wallow the watering hole helps with cooling themselves down helps remove ectoparasites and it's it's also just a lot of fun to play in the mud uh, elephants feed for about 16 hours a day so they have to eat about six percent of their total body weight in order because they have such a poor digestive system and I suppose if you can't figure out how your trunk works, you may as well just put your face in the food. Always trailing the, the breeding herds of these uh, young bulls at the back. for that I don't know if you realize kind of what happened at the end there, but uh, first and foremost, you saw how close, I, I told you how close you can get to the wildlife in South Africa. So you certainly saw a great example of that. But just at the end, when that elephant was kind of turning at the corner and walking away, you may have heard a little flutter. And then you heard poor Andrew rather choking. And that's because uh, that elephant passed gas. <laughs> um, so um, I'm not quite sure how you might rate that, but certainly a wow moment in Africa, I think. Um, it can be really quite crazy. Um, and then there are some other really wonderful things, things that go on behind the scenes that people don't normally get to see uh, when they travel to Africa. But we like to take you there and show you if you're interested in these are things that you'd like to do. And one of the best ways uh, for anti-poaching is through the Tango K9 program uh, or with dogs. Um, this is now becoming uh, quite common throughout Africa. So you'll see it in East Africa, South Africa, and so on. But we like to bring you, you'll meet the trainers, you'll get to meet the dogs, and you'll be able to find out how they are working so hard uh, to uh, stop the poachers, because poaching remains a very, very critical problem in all over Africa. We also have the opportunity to meet the communities out in the middle of nowhere. We saw them in Cape Town in the city, but then to meet the people who are living out in the bush areas here and contributing to, uh, they grow up to become game rangers and trackers and so on, and how there are projects to bring them fresh, clean water. It changes their lives. It truly, truly is remarkable. And one of my favorite things to do when we're on safari at the end of every day, um, just about 15 or 20 minutes before the sun sets, we're going to stop the vehicle and out of it is going to come all sorts of fun things and a full bar and tables and chairs and appetizers and tablecloths and cutlery and so on. Um, I always say it's a little bit like Mary Poppins pulling it all out of the bag. It's really quite remarkable. And, um, and we will stop, pour ourselves a drink and we will bid farewell to the sun. Um, because sunsets in Africa are truly a remarkable time of the day. One of my favorite places uh, in South Africa is at Jabulani. And Jabulani has an incredible project 
uh, where they have saved all these elephants and they're bringing them together and they're creating a herd. Um, the elephants have all come from different parts of Africa. They were orphaned. They were, uh, you know, being whatever the whatever reason, um, much of it related to poaching that they were abandoned and left on their own. And they brought them together and created this herd. And uh, to come to Jabalani and uh, pour yourself a glass of champagne, a gin and tonic at sundown time and witness the elephants coming together um, as they uh, pass through the sunset. So why don't we just take a second and watch how remarkable this truly is. Scenes like this are some of those things that just make Africa, as I said, those wow moments. Uh, you will see that there is somebody walking with the elephants. That is because what Jabalani did, as I said, these were all orphans. They were certainly would have died without the intervention of Jabalani and the Jabalani project. And they're creating this herd. They take them out into the wild every day and they let them roam free, but they're still learning how to fend for themselves and what to do. And so in the evenings, they do come back to this uh, um, uh, protected area uh, where they can be. And as I say, to end your day, uh, just seeing this remarkable, remarkable scene is truly something very, very special to do in Africa. Now, I promised you something a little bit different, so we're going to change gears completely and go all the way to the other end of Africa, to the northwestern part of the continent, um, because at African Travel, we are very proud to be introducing Morocco. We're going to be doing Morocco in a very special way for you, um, which is going to include some of the majestic scenery uh, up in the Atlas Mountains of this stunningly, stunningly beautiful country. Uh, the mountains are really remarkable for some that you think of being really more just flat desert Sahara, um, but look how beautiful it is. It's absolutely stunning. And the culinary uh, treats in Morocco are just extraordinary. Um, so we will, of course, yet again, uh, be able to have that opportunity uh, to do a cooking class here um, and to, again to meet with the people. But we're taking cooking class here to another level and doing something very, very special with it. You'll have to come with us to Morocco to experience it and see what we are doing and how we're making this work. But throughout Morocco, it is truly a feast for the senses, the sounds, the aroma. Uh, the sites. It is really a remarkable, remarkable country um, and uh, somewhere that everybody should at least visit once in their life. Lots and lots to see in Morocco. And we're very proud to be partnering with CAA to bring you the very, very best of Morocco. Now, I want to change gears again very quickly and move us back down into the central southern part of Africa. And we're going to take a look at Botswana. So Botswana is the crown jewel when it comes to sustainability, but also to getting off the grid. For somewhere that is the absolute epitome of uh, well-being and just getting away from it all, Botswana is truly, truly remarkable. 
It is home to the Okavanga Delta, which is the largest inland delta in the world. And one of the cool things about that means that, you know, you are going to go on safari in different ways. So, for example, you can go by Makoro or dugout canoe. What a really cool way to be floating through the Okavanga Delta and uh, seeing all sorts of wildlife that lives here because the wildlife has adapted to living in, on and around the water. But it isn't only about water in Botswana. There is part of Botswana that is um, part of the Namib Desert. Um, and uh, this, therefore, it becomes very flat, very dry, very arid. And you have the opportunity to meet the San Bushmen. Uh, San Bushmen are one of the world's ancient tribes, and they still stick to their ancient traditions. Um, it really is absolutely remarkable to meet them. And this is a, an incredible opportunity for kids. The kids love this kind of thing. Um, you know, all of Africa really is fantastic for families and for kids of all ages. Now, if you want my personal opinion, the very, very, very young ones, infants and two and three-year-olds, Maybe not so much. That's a big troop movement. They don't really appreciate what they're doing. But once they get to this age, obviously, it depends a little bit on the children themselves. Um, but certainly once they get to six, seven, and definitely eight, nine, and on, Africa is such a remarkable experience for them. And I love it because you guys come back and say, wow, our children have been changed for the best. And they are going to have these make travel matter experiences. They are going to have these wow moments in Africa. And they put down the games and they put down their phones and whatever it is that they might have. Um, and they really, really get to experience something very, very special. And Botswana is really fantastic for wildlife. Um, certainly you've got meerkats as we're seeing here, but in the Salinda area, we've got an amazing population of big cats. This one, obviously not so big, but again, that uh, greatness and wonderful uh, moment of adorability and cuteness with a baby leopard. Um, and again, uh, different ways to see it. Um, so at Kijera, they have these raised boats. So you are doing it by boat, but you're getting it at just at a slightly higher level. Another opportunity that we're able to provide in Botswana is for you to go out and become a citizen scientist. So you will go out with the rangers and you're going to help them to count the animals. This gives them a really good idea of how the animal populations are doing, how they're thriving, what's happening, and you'll be able to see how it's recorded, how it matches up to what has been recorded over the last month, six months, a year, and so on. And you're doing your part to really keep uh, the, the, the knowledge of what's happening and to continue um, uh, ensuring that Africa is here for generations to come, which is really, really cool. And I mentioned sundowners earlier, um, where we do pour our drink and bid farewell to the sun. Well, in Botswana, we take sundowners to a different level, and we're going to do sundowners delta style. So in the Okavanga Delta, in your dugout canoe coming around the corner, and the bar is going to be all set up for you. Mm, what an absolutely fantastic way to do it. But you know, Botswana is absolutely all about the wow. Um, I can't guarantee that this will happen to you when you're in Botswana, but boy, I sure kind of hope that it does, uh, because you will come home just in raptures, and with images like this, you'll be the talk of the uh, cocktail parties and dinner parties and so on for weeks, months, uh, perhaps even years to come. Now, I know a lot of you are saying, well, Kevin, this is all very well, and the animals are great, and the, scene, the scenery is fantastic, the experiences are just amazing. But where are we going to stay? Is it really not kind of rustic when we go to Africa? Is it going to be a mud hut with a thatched roof and a hole around the back for a bathroom or whatever? Well, no, absolutely not. The accommodations in Africa are remarkable. So this is a hotel in Cape Town, very modern, very contemporary. But we also have the Twelve Apostles also in Cape Town, much more traditional in style. But you're starting to see a pattern forming here. Um, they are really amazing, very comfortable, very luxurious accommodations. And then once you go out on safari, the lodges are simply incredible. 
Uh, this is a lodge in Botswana, um, and it's really remarkable. And you're wondering still about those bathrooms, just how primitive are they? Well, not so primitive at all. Um, bathroom facilities are fantastic. I can see you all luxuriating in that copper tub with your glass of champagne, and hopefully maybe an elephant walking past the window there while the fire crackles behind you. Look at the remarkable shower that's here. Many places have indoor and outdoor showers. I love outdoor showers in Africa. It's a really wonderful way for you to just really feel one with nature. Um, but the water is nice and piping hot, and it's a great way to start a morning or end the day. And some of you may have heard of tented camps. And you think, all right, well, tented camp, I'm sure that's going to be camping. Um, it's going to be the Boy Scout tent with the uh, igloo cooler down the side and the cot and so on and so on. Well, think again. So this is a traditional or a regular kind of tent that you can expect to find all over Africa. This one happens to be at Shamwari that we were looking at a little earlier. Um, but you can see wood floors, sliding glass doors. Um, if you didn't touch the walls of the tent, you wouldn't know it was canvas. And look down at the end of your deck there. You've got your own private plunge pool. This is not a presidential suite or anything. This is a standard tent at Sindili Camp in Shamwari. And then we have some fantastic and really fun experiences for you. Uh, we call this a star bed. It gives you the opportunity to sleep out under the African sky. Um, they will have dinner for you up on the platform. You've got your four poster bed there. And if you're wondering about how, what happens if you need to go and pay a visit in the middle of the night, if you see where the four poster bed is, and uh, we just drop just below that about a half a level and over to the right hand side here in closed area, that's your bathroom. Um, so uh, all the men, everything is good and you don't have to pee over the edge uh, or the side of the uh, platform or anything crazy like that. But one thing I can assure you of is that no matter what you stay or where you stay, everything is going to have a true sense of destination. How much more out of Africa do you get than something like this? Um, everywhere you're going to go, you're going to have local assistance. We have our own people. We have 16 regional offices throughout Africa. We are the largest footprint of travel in Africa. So our people are there ready to assist and help you with anything that you need while you are actually in Africa. You will never be alone. We're with you every single step of the way. And if you book with CAA, Karen mentioned earlier about those amazing benefits that you get, uh, we are actually going for all bookings made between now and uh, through uh, for travel through December 31st, 2024, we're going to give you double member benefits. Um, so that can give you a savings of up to $500 per person. Um, and that's good on anything that we do, whether it be CAA vacation or a custom FIT or independent style program, anything that you book through CAA with us, you will get those double member benefits. And for those of you who might be thinking of traveling solo and uh, you're concerned about single supplements, first and foremost, we do keep the single supplement as low as possible. But on our Tanzania Explorer, this is a CAA vacations uh, uh, itinerary. I'm going to talk about those programs in just a little bit more detail in a second. Um, but on our Tanzania Explorer, we have in every single departure in 2024, no single supplement availability for you. So that really can work in your favor. Um, we didn't get a chance to talk about Rwanda tonight, um, but of course, Rwanda is the smallest country in Africa, packs the biggest punch, and really is best known for guerrilla trekking. Guerrilla trekking is taking life changing to the next level. It's so special, um, and uh, it, it's just the most amazing experience. And for anybody that is interested, we do have an ongoing promotion um, that if you are traveling, it started already November the uh, at first, and it will run through May 2024, we're going to do a 30% savings for you on a guerrilla trekking permit. Um, so anybody that might be familiar with guerrilla trekking might know that the permit is actually one of the biggest components of that. Um, but the good news is that 100% of the proceeds from guerrilla trekking permits does go to the conservation of gorillas. 
I promised you that we would mention the uh, CAA vacations programs. These are small group departures. They operate with a minimum of four guests and a maximum of 12. We operate them to Kenya, Tanzania, and South Africa. We've got a couple of departures left to Egypt uh, in 2023, um, uh, but then that program actually is going to fall away in 2024. We will continue with our custom program, but I do just keep mentioning it here because there is a couple of departures uh, in, de in December. If you're looking for that last minute um, uh, trip to do, then maybe why not? Um, but certainly uh, some great deals here. I told you about the no single supplement um, in a, in, on the Tanzania Explorer. And our Kenya Wildlife Safari Program includes international air. Now that air is out of New York, United States, but it is on the nonstop from a Kennedy in New York uh, Airport to uh, Nairobi on Kenyan Airways. Uh, so once you get yourself to uh, uh, New York, it really is a one-stop uh, shot, and it's, I mean, or a non-stop shot. It really is fantastic. So I wanted to end this evening just by taking you on another little trip on safari, just to give you a little idea. This is actually all filmed in Shamwari, um, and I just think it's really kind of cool. So let's sit back, let's relax, and let's go to Shamwari. <laughs> Gorgeous eyelashes. Eh? Hey guys, this is the leopard tortoise. White rhinoceros, clearly not white in color. Look at the size of the horn. Absolutely yeah. fantastic. But we can also see how docile these white rhino are and how vulnerable they are with the, with the poachers. It was amazing. I'm going now to go look for some elephants for you guys. Don't worry about his body language. Mm -hmm. Be a good boy. I'm just going to go two seconds back. Brother and sister yet. Mm -hmm. She's trying to save him from the big bull. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah look at the size. David and Goliath here. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. That was cool. Absolutely lovely, eh? Yes. In South Africa, our home. A chocolate chip cookie, double chocolate chip cookie, gin and tonic with brilladella and the sun setting behind me. In the bush, what more can I ask for? Just amazing. So, you know, the African sky at night is remarkable. It is a million points of light that shine down upon you. We all live under the same sky, but so few of us ever get the opportunity to see it in, its all, in all its glory as it is uh, in Africa. And like the million points of light that do shine upon you, we, at the, along with, the, uh, with the, the folks at CAA that we're so proud to partner with, are here and we're ready to light your way through Africa. So with that, I'm going to throw it back to Karen for a wrap up and, uh, and then we'll take it from there. Wonderful, Kevin. That was an incredible experience. Thank you for taking us on that journey. If anyone has any questions, please uh, drop them in the Q&A box you see at the bottom of your screen there. So working with your CA travel team, um, as you see, we have a fantastic connection with African travel and uh, we certainly work with them because they are the experts as well as uh, a few of our team who have recently been traveling to Africa. You're going to receive the exclusive member benefits that Kevin shared with you. And of course, we are your one-stop shop for all your travel needs. And of course, never forget to pack the most important thing is your travel insurance right now. 
So you could register for upcoming travel talks. Our next one is actually going to be on Wednesday, the 29th. We're going to be going to Alaska with the experts Holland America. So you can register for that next travel talk at 7 p.m. If you missed one of our travel talks, you can actually just click on the QR code there and catch the replay and watch any of our past travel talks. And if you want to share this uh, incredible journey to Africa with your friends and family, you can actually share that link with them too, and they can enjoy it. It'll be on our website in a couple of days. And then what we've done to make your time a little bit more efficient is you can actually make an appointment with our travel team. So whether you want to meet them in person or if you want to uh, just have a phone call and uh, you know learn a little bit more, if you have any further questions, I'm just looking, we don't have any in the Q&A box but we're here to, to assist with your, with your travel. We call it, it's, you know, we've, we've done the, uh, the bucket list. Well, now it's called the book it list. So we need to get with all those wonderful trips that you've been saving for the past few years and, uh, and start actually to confirm that and make a, a plan for 24 or 25. And of course, Africa should be at the top of your list because as Kevin mentioned, it is absolutely life-changing. It's an incredible journey. So Kevin, thank you so much for joining us. I understand you're off to Africa shortly, so have a, a wonderful, safe journey. I, I'm very jealous. Have a great time, and we look forward to hearing all the updates when you get back. You bet, Karen. Thank you very much. Yes, I'm very excited. I will be going to, interesting enough, South Africa and Botswana, so stay tuned for all that is new and exciting again. <laughs> wonderful. Thanks for joining us, ladies and gentlemen. Have a wonderful evening.